Daniel Hoft, and I discovered this uh, this concept by a lecture by a, an Australian scientist, Tim Flannery, who talks about uh, seaweeds and how they can draw down CO2. And I became interested in the concept purely because I'm a keen snorkeler and uh, I'd never experienced big brown kelp forests. So I was more interested autodidactically in how this works um, and suddenly discovered that here's an opportunity um, to use all the skills that I've built in my career and uh, use it for something that's, uh, that's useful for the planet. We chose to grow um, the biggest type of seaweed called the Macrocystis periphera, the giant kelp, because it's, um, it's the fastest growing organism on the planet. It, uh, it can be up to 65 meters tall. It has all these compounds that you can use for pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, but also mainly for, for stimulation of, uh, of agricultural activities, so stimulus of growth, resilience of, uh, of crops against drought and disease. Um, and its particular benefit from a commercial perspective is that we can repeat harvest it. So it's a plant that grows up from 20 meters to the surface, and all we're doing is we're trimming the canopy of this, this underwater forest, which grows back incredibly rapidly. And so once we'd selected this species, we'd, we looked at where it could grow best. And what the species needs is constant nutrient supply, and what it needs is constant stable temperatures of ideally between 11 and 15 degrees Celsius. And the, the upwelling cell around Ludritz in the Benguela current is optimal, probably the best place in the world for these conditions. And in addition, um, what we look at is that you want to see states that aren't too big, so storms that are relatively small, and the storms here are, are significant, but they're still only about half the wave heights that you get in some other good places. So we, we rapidly concluded that Ludwitz was the, the best place to do this globally, um, and of course looked also at availability of, of services, of equipment, of uh, how easy it is to do business in different countries. And there are certainly challenges operating in Ludwitz with logistics and access to equipment, but it's, it's a very pleasant place to do business. Very clean, very uh, straightforward, and there are a lot of skilled people who, uh, who are keen to work. We are growing the plants at 20 meters depth, but in a full water depth of between 50 and 200 meters. So we anchor a structure to the bottom, and then at 20, 15, 20 meters depth, there's a structure which consists of large ropes at, at big grids so that whales can pass through them freely. And on these ropes, you seed them with microscopic seaweed plants that we prepare here in the, in the hatchery um, here in, uh, in town. And those plants then grow to surface and become fully mature within anywhere between 7 and 12 months. Once they're at maturity, then we can start harvesting the, the top, the canopy. To see it like a rainforest, it's, it's, it's fairly bushy, but most of the, the, the greenery, most of the leaves are floating at the surface. And that's the canopy that we trim. It grows back every three months and we process the, the biomass by uh, chopping it up, homogenizing it, putting it through uh, membrane filters at high pressure. So there's no addition of chemicals, there's no addition of heat. It's a purely mechanical process by which we extract very specific growth hormones that then form uh, the biostimulants that we, uh, that we can market. The ultimate purpose of what we're doing is, is drawdown of carbon, boost of biodiversity, hopefully on a regional scale. And to enable this, um, you, need a, you need a large scale of forests. And to enable that, you need to be able to move have large volumes of product. So from growing through to the end customer, what we're trying to achieve is something that is uh, profitable for our shareholders, something that is uh, beneficial economically to the end consumer, the farmer, while the way that it's done from A to Z is improving the environment. And I think this is a very important distinction from uh, many people who are working in the environmental sphere is we're, we're not seeking to, to reduce our impact on the environment, we're seeking to have a, a, a very net positive impact on the environment while producing things that are useful. At the end of the chain, biostimulants also improve the soil of, of farmers while making their yields better and their crops healthier. So what, what we're really seeking is to inspire people with the realization that it 
it is fully possible to have a very profitable business in sectors that are essential to human uh, to uh, to the human condition and do so in a way that improves the environment rather than degrading it. We now do a one and a half hectare pilot. Um, it's a very small structure compared to what we intend to do in the future. It's about 400 meters long, 40 wide. Uh, it should should produce about 200 tons of fresh seaweed per year, which is of course very small. There are a number of things we, we want to prove. One is that the environmental benefit is there. Two is that there are no unexpected neg negative impacts. Um, so that's the, the, the sort of regulatory must as well. Uh, and then from a commercial and viability perspective, we're looking at does our engineering work? Can we, can we at the right cost, build structures that uh, can sustain the worst storms? Does the seaweed grow well? Can we harvest it? So the whole, it, it's testing at a small scale whether the, this would work at a large scale. Then we would move towards uh, commercial, perhaps in 2023, perhaps 2024, which consists of, at this stage, consists of a, an 800 hectare first commercial farm or forest. Uh, and the 800 hectare forest could, could produce as much as 200,000 tons of fresh seaweed, which would be processed probably largely on the vessels that harvest it uh, and then sold to, to customers in Namibia regionally and internationally. We dovetail beautifully with this uh, vision of a Namibia that is really at the forefront in many ways of doing business in a different way and, and harnessing the power of nature in a different way. Uh, so working with nature rather than against it. And I, I find that hugely inspiring that when, when we look at these initiatives if only a tenth of it is realized, then I think Namibia would be showing um, places like Europe and the US the, the way forward. And that personally I find very inspiring.